Do -do 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 -do. Hello, BookTube. Do -do 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 -do. Um, the funny joke is that I had um, stayed up really late last night to um, make this awesome playlist on Spotify and it was like 4 in the morning before I went to bed and then when I woke up today I realized that I had two playlists with the same name and I'm like that's weird so I did some investigating and it turns out that um, probably like two or three months ago um, I made the exact same playlist and um, I mean there are some differences but it's just like the hell's wrong with me? So, I wanted this just to be like a morning coffee book chat. Um, kind of talk to you a little bit about what I've been reading and what I've been going over. Um, so first off, The Breakfast of Champions um, read-along went really well. And um, we had a lot of good talks on Discord about it. And, um, yeah, it, it was, it's good. And it's an emotional read. Um, it's, it has its, uh, little sad moments. Um, and then it's completely absurd moments. So it's all good. But, um, we had some good talks about it and, um, one of the things that I've always just kind of glossed over when reading this was, um, I think Mr. Vonnegut was quite sick when, um, he wrote this and there's, it's just like a couple throwaway lines, um, where he talks about his like mental health and stuff. And, um, it just, probably just because of all the stuff we've been talking about, it just really shook me. And, um, it just really shook me. So, this book is always fun. Um, there were a couple people talking about how, um, the style of the prose, let's say, is a bit um, grading, and, um, I could see it, um, in fact, there was, I think, right before you get to, like, chapter 20, like, I felt like for, like, a split second, I was like, oh, this is getting really, like, almost on my nerves, and then, um, as soon as you hit chapter 20, it's like, whoo! so, um, the book just jams at that point. Okay, next, um, I've been reading this, uh, little brick here, um, Hunter S. Thompson's The Great Shark Hunt, Gonzo Papers Volume 1, Did, was there a Gonzo Papers Volume 2? Um, I don't know, I think this book is a little too, um, meaty. And when I say that, I say it because a lot of these are articles that were published um, in different journals and stuff. And the thing that I love about Hunter S. Thompson is just the madness of his prose. Like, I don't know a better way of describing it. But the thing that I think is going to hurt him as time goes on is because he was a journalist first and a writer second. Um, his stuff is very of the time. And... Um, 
like, if you're not hip on Nixon and McGovern in 72, a lot of this is either going to be very enlightening to you, or you're going to want to kill yourself. Um, so, it's just like, it trips me out. It's like, all the guys like this, all the guys who would not have stood for the just total bullshit of the last two years are dead. And it fucking makes me so angry. Like, there needs to be a Hunter S. Thompson. There needs to be a Kurt Vonnegut. There needs to be a fucking Charles Bukowski. There needs to be these people who fucking say what's happening right now is not okay. This is the fall of an empire. Um, we are making a very ungodly human a god. We need to not do this. Um, I don't know. I'm just like, ugh, fucking Nixon looks like a fucking church girl right now compared to the shit that's been going on. So anyway, um, I was just getting really down reading this and, um, not down in the sense of, look at this big ass book costs 350 brand new. Jesus fucking Christ. The price of paper in America. Am I right? Um, no, it's just, uh, I don't know how else to say it guys. Like, um, I'm going to, I'm going to get real here for a second. I was driving down the street yesterday <clears throat> and all along the roads from here down to the highway, every like 10 fucking feet, they have American flags hanging on the telephone poles blowing in the wind. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, it's another holiday coming. And I'm like, shit, it's Memorial Day. So that means a three-day weekend. There's going to be a bunch of fucking out-of-towners up here. Um, like, doing their, woohoo, I got an extra day off of work. Let's do something crazy. And that's fine. People, like, deserve to do fun stuff when they are allowed to do it. It's just annoying when they do it in your yard. But, um... Because when we moved in here, like, if you remember our last place in Big Bear, there were a lot of, um, like, vacation rentals. Like, the other houses were vacation rentals. And the house next door is a vacation rental. And um, I think the house across the street this way is a vacation rental. Um, so I'm just, like, I, I just can't wait to see uh, what fucking the cat drags in to celebrate this, um, monumentous holiday. Um, but just like the sight of the flag, um, this is going to get dark here for a second, but the sight of the flag guys, um, it has a different cast. It's not, it's not the same. It doesn't feel the same. Like when I saw the flags blowing, it wasn't just the tourists coming up here. Like, I just got, like, sick in the pit of my stomach thinking about um, all of these people who um, are kind of using that as a symbol for, like, their cult mentality. And um, it's just like, this isn't the same country that my grandpa fought for in World War II, you know? Like, this isn't the same... Um, fuck, this isn't even the same country that people fought in Afghanistan for, like, like a minute and a half ago, like, it, it's just, uh, I don't know, it, it just, like, it made me ill, and I've never, never felt like that before, um, and I just think, like, dude, if Hunter S. Thompson, Bukowski, and Vonnegut, like, came over for dinner one night, and drinks, and, like, I, I rose them from the dead, sat them down, and said, okay, guys, this is gonna sound like a funny fucking joke, seriously, but I want you guys to see what the fuck's going on, and just give them, like, a clip show of the last, like, two years, um, I think they would just, like, turn around and go back to being dead, like, where are the people, like, who hold us accountable for this lunacy? 
like, help me, somebody. Seriously. Uh-oh, I lost my screen. Where, where, where are we? Okay, there we are. I don't know. So, if you know, if you're like, oh, there's this great, um, satirist that fucking does this stuff like Vonnegut used to do, or, oh, there's this great journalist who's, like, um, in Rolling Stone and doing this stuff and really on the pulse, you know, of what's going on. And if it's just someone who says, oh, this person should be canceled. Like, I don't want to fucking hear no buzzword shit. Like, there needs to be people who fucking hold people accountable in the media and in the Twitterverse. Maybe we don't need these anymore because we just have, like, what, anger mobs and hate mobs online. But nothing, it doesn't work. I, I'm just like, ah. Uh, Oh, guys, humanity is just fucking letting me down. So with that said, let's talk about what else I'm reading. So, I finished this piece of shit. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so this was just a total fucking hate read. Um... And I can't believe people praise this book. It's not well written. It's, um, it's rough. Another thing, there's all these pictures in it, but let me show you something here. All the pictures are like screenshots from like YouTube videos or something. And, oh, you, you want a picture of Bukowski? Okay, it's about the size of a quarter. So get out your fucking magnifying glass and take a look at it. Um... All the pictures are super tiny. It's like, what's the fucking point, right? Okay, um, so for those of you who don't know, um, this, oh, you want, you want another picture? So, uh, okay, it's very little. Um, but Scarlet, or Cupcakes, or Pamela Wood, um, this chick right here, look at that smug face. <laughs> um, she, uh, kind of dated Bukowski for a while. Um, that's them during some interview. <clears throat> and, um, she's either Tammy or Tanya or something like that in the book Women. And, um, Bukowski wrote a, uh, like a chat book that Black Sparrow put out called Scarlet. Um, and it was just, like, poems inspired by her. And they're actually really good. That's, like, one of the... And all of them are included in Love is a Dog from Hell. And that's really where Love is a Dog from Hell picks up. Like, um, she, as far as a muse goes, was amazing for him. But um, if you read the book Women, she comes off as just, like, a total mindless junkie in this book she's saying just um how intelligent and how beautiful and how um well spoken and um just what an amazing person she is and she's supposed to be tore up on pills and drink through the whole thing and in this book she like like has like full on conversations like she remembers everything that everybody said but she couldn't remember where she parked her car um, she remembers everything that anyone did but can't remember where she like put her camera you know like I can't remember where she put her prescription and every two seconds and she never talks about um, her having a problem but she's always talking about needing, like, Dexies from the doctor and needing to go fill a prescription and all this other shit. And then at the very end of the book, spoiler alert, she's like, I realized I had a problem. So, um, I don't know if that was just, like, her poetic license, like, letting us know that she was on drugs that whole fucking time, but it never affected anything. And then other people around her that were on drugs, they were trash. And, um, and then she even remembers a fucking poem 
that she typed on Bukowski's typewriter when they got into a big fight one night. Like, I want to believe the majority of this book, but, like, I can it, what, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do when you know someone was so fucking tore up the entire time and was constantly losing everything? And, but, like, 20 years, 30 years later, remembered every conversation verbatim she ever had with another human being. Um, and this book came highly recommended to me from people who've read um, a lot of the Bukowski tell-all books. And um, I was just a little let down. Like, the whole time you read that book, it makes you want to just kind of smack her, you know? I guess if you're into smacking, um, I guess, elderly women now for the things they did in their 20s. So anyway, so I was very down on that. And so, but this book I've been wanting to get forever and um, found it for not a reasonably good price, but um, found it for a price that I didn't um, want to kill myself for pain. And, um, Linda King, dude, um, Linda fucking King, when you read women, you're like, oh, dude, Linda King, she's Lydia in, um, women, and you're like, oh, dude, that bitch is crazy, dude, oh my god. He actually, I, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, he actually downplayed it. She's fucking nuts. Um, like, there's parts where she, um, but it's so much fun. Like, I, as nuts as she is, I think I would get along with her. Like, cupcakes, I would have, like, been overtly trying to, um, make her have these little accidents around the house to see if, um, she could accidentally die. Like, she would have pissed me off like nobody's business. Linda King. I used to, like, really dislike her a lot. But, like, after reading, I mean, I'm barely into it. I'm, like, a third of the way into it. She's batshit crazy, but I think it would be a crazy that's that you could sit through. Like, she thinks, or at least during this time in the book she's talking about, she thought that she could speak the voice of God and wouldn't know what was coming out. It was God's voice. And it was like that. And it was just like some big shouty thing. And, um... It got so bad that she kept doing this that her family sent her for electroshock treatments in a madhouse. And, um, like, one of the times her and Bukowski early on, he's like, come on, show me the God voice. Do the God voice. She's like, no, no, no. And then she's like, Bukowski! And she starts screaming at him. That's fucking bad shit, okay? Um, and then she thought that... Um, According to her, like, the best way to describe why she would be going after such an older man is that, um, she had a dream that angels told her that it was her mission to save him, and that's why she did it. <clears throat> so anyway, um, you know, it's just, uh, wow, you know, um, I think Bukowski really downplayed a lot of her like n madness because uh but I mean I don't know like maybe later on she'll go ah, I was just fucking around so I just started reading it so um I can't really give you a good explanation about that but it's been fun so uh yeah so that's that and if anybody um has an answer to 
these questions. Because we need him. We need him back. We need to resurrect him somehow. We need to uh, find him. Find find a find a hunter to fucking take care of this shit. Um, and uh, I don't know. It's just I I'm down. Like I can't believe that um, the American flag made me feel physically ill thinking of what it symbolized what the fuck is that um yeah so anyway um help me out guys um do me a favor oh and by the way um poetic anarchy um that's still a thing that's happening um it's a four-week intensive poetry workshop hosted by me and taught by me you get a ton of stuff afterwards we're going to do a poetry reading and we are going to put a paperback anthology out that looks probably a lot like this so um it's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to learn a lot of stuff about ourselves and each other so um i'll have a link down below and um through this week still you get um a huge discount on that so uh, i will talk to you guys soon and Shalom and bye-bye.